Okay, good evening, uh, Kelvin and uh, Maxwell. Um, since Kelvin, you cannot introduce yourself. Uh, what you have to do is um, to leave a short introduction of yourself on the chat. That is uh, your name, where you come from, and what you're doing now. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Cyprian Jason, and um, I am a writer, I'm a publisher, I publish books for myself and other people. I'm also a teacher in a French high school here. So today, I welcome you all to creative, um, to creative writing, that's introduction to creative writing. Now, what you can see um, here are my books. So um, I've published um, nine books for myself, uh, four books that's on paperback and others on ebook. And I'm writing a new book now, um, and the title is um, Breakaway. So this is me. So this lesson um, takes us to um, different steps, what we will cover in this course. So first of all, we will look at the logistics. We will look at the goal of the course, what's expected from you, what does it feel to be a writer, structure of a story, types of uh, story narratives, and types of narratives. So we'll go slowly, and this is going to be an interactive um, lesson. That means as I go along, um, there will be exchange between us. So as I move, now you can see the course logistics. Normally I wrote here 12 classes. It's for people here. I give uh, creative uh, writing um, courses here, but yours might be um, in three classes for the introduction or four, much depends our pace. Now, after each class, there'll be an assignment. I prepared an assignment for this very class we are uh, doing now. Now, for a feedback, um, luckily we have created a, a WhatsApp group. So if you want a feedback from me on uh, the assignments, you can leave a message on the WhatsApp group, or you can uh, send me an email, or you contact uh, Cyril Odeningbo also to leave your assignments with him. So um i think i'm recording i don't know if i have started recording let me see i just I think, want yes to... you're recording yeah okay so um this uh, lesson is recorded and then um i'll make sure that i post it on uh, my channel and bring it and, and then bring it back to to um uh, our whatsapp group so Going, uh, you can see here, yeah, you can see uh, another book here, I wrote Stranger Lane. I'm not going to talk about my books today because you are um, the students for today. So in, in the intermediate course, I can talk about my books, but for today, I will not talk about it. I'm only talking about introduction to creative writing. Now, what we're going to do is um, the first story you are going to write. Very simple. Said so write a short story, 100% of your own, and then you send that to Cyril Odenimbo. So it's just the first assignment. It could be about yourself. It could be about um, your career um maxwell said 
he is he studied electronic uh, engineer and then, engineer yeah el uh, electronic engineering and then the first question that i wanted to ask him is from electronic engineering to creative writing to entertainment and then it shows that maxwell is a very creative person very passionate in what is ha ha happening around him it could be his subject what he wants to write why electronic engineering first of all and again i think you're not working um as an electric uh, electronic engineer maxwell sorry it's chemical chemical engineering a chemical engineer i'm sorry you are not working as a chemical no no no, no 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 okay very good you see um <laughs> this is wonderful and this is what a good number of parents will say ah why did i send my son to the university to do chemical engineering and um if i should take another case uh, maxwell assuming you are a musician he said i trained you for four years in the university and now you're a musician parents don't like that and that's where the story is that's where the story is uh, ben okri i don't know if some of you know if you know ben okri do you know ben okri uh, maxwell not really no not really he's a nigerian writer well known in london and around the world there's a there's one of his quotes i i love so much he said where there is perfection there's no story you can check it yeah, where there's perfection it. there's no story and uh, if you to push it further and to give an example where you live if everybody is good very good very nice people you don't have people making trouble or whatever what a boring world and there'll be no story because if you write one line the only line you have written is everybody's nice everybody is good and that's the end of it and it's not going to be very interesting so your story is very interesting you can go on it um kelvin i don't know if he left me a chat to talk about himself because this is a very practical uh, you know lesson he's uh, hearing me can you write something so that i can read and see uh, about yourself kelvin please as i go ahead so i'm going to show you guys um, the technique of uh, writing and this technique all of you you all know it because when you were small you do hear bedtime stories the grandma stories the grandma that did not go to school and then can tell us the story of the turtle the wisest animal in uh, in the forest and then the story of the grandma starts with uh, the beginning uh, you guys that are in a film um, school um, you call it establishment you establish your story and then in writing we call it uh, the setting of the book now the grandma will set the book in the forest in the animal kingdom and uh, the protagonist and the character that we are going to see will be the turtle you see so the story that you guys will send to Cyril Odenigo will just be um, in five lines or more. And then you can expand it. But I'm going to show you um, the technique. Now, the technique is what you are looking, what, what you are seeing here. In uh, filmmaking, is the same thing. It's called log line, it's the picture the picture of your story in five lines. And then you can develop it to, if you are writing a script, to a big script. Then for book, uh, for a book, uh, the question is, what's your book about? So if that question is asked, you'll be able to answer it in, in a few minutes. Or the idea of your book, what what would you like to write about? You see, um, Kelvin um, uh, is not talking because we cannot, but he's hearing me. 
So, uh, Maxwell, I will interact with you. Thank you. If you want to write a story today, what type of story would you like to write about? Uh, what's your story idea, Maxwell? Maybe I could write about the insecurity in Nigeria. Sorry? The insecurity in Nigeria. You see, you see, when you pick the insecurity in Nigeria, you can write 200 pages or more. You, yes. can, write, you, you can continue writing. And um, now here you can see the title. Uh, we call it the five finger pitch. The pitch is when you meet your editor or uh, who is going to publish you and the ed editor puts money on your head, will ask you to give your pitch. And since he is the one that is going to sponsor the book, and then uh, you have a few minutes because there are so many candidates, you have a few minutes to just say a few seconds. It takes one minute to say, this I'm going to just exactly what you told me, Maxwell. I want to write about the insecurity of uh, in Nigeria. So as an editor, I buy your idea immediately because I know you're in the environment and you are going to write about it. So um, this type of book that you are going to write, uh, the genre, it's, um, it's, um, it could it be adventure, it could be, um, how, how do I say it? Uh, it's not going to be comedy anyway, in any way. No. It, it could be fiction, it could be fiction. You yeah. can put it in, uh, uh, it, 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 if you don't want to write the true story, because fictions are realities. Agatha Christie, um, when she, when she uh, uh, wakes up in the morning, picks up all the newspapers around, and that was how she was able to write about criminals and how the and, and, and even add more imagination. So the insecurity in Nigeria could be a fiction if you want. You can write it as, a, as an essay if you want. And then you can write it as a personal story, how it is affecting you. How it is affecting you. So now that's the genre. It could be fiction. It could be true story, yeah, and then you, you don't want to have characters and um, make it, you, you just want to bring it raw the way it is. And then um, you must be the um, uh, protagonist if you are writing. Like in cinema, if you are shooting a documentary, you, have to, you might see it as a documentary. Uh, there, is, there is something we call the A role and the B role. The A role is the person telling the story. I think that's what you study in your cinema and the events. If you are shooting movies, you, I mean documentaries. So if yeah. your writing looks like a documentary, it all means you are telling the story from your point of view. Because if you're in Enugu, you cannot cover the whole of Enugu except you have a drone in your head. So it could be your own area. The setting of the book will be in your own area. And then, and what people told you, stories from newspapers, what you hear, testimonies from other people will now make that book. So now the goal of uh, insecurity, why are you writing about it? You might say, um is to stop it the reasons why it's happening and so on and then the obstacles might be people might not be able to go out in the night or in the day and the people are kidnapped and so on and then why what's important why is it important it's important because if there's no insecurity business will flow and there are so many other things you know uh, to tourism uh, like I'm here, I can bring people from France to come and visit Enugu, you see, and uh, and uh, no one will be kidnapped. 
So it's a very nice point if you want to develop that. If you want to develop that. Do you have anything to say? Let us interact so that uh, Kelvin can hear us. From your point of view, um, can you give me just a nutshell of how you are going to develop that story? Kelvin, uh, um, uh, Maxwell, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the thing is that I, I don't know much, like I don't know much about what's happening in the North. So definitely if I'm to develop that story, the where we're having major challenges on, in, on security is, I think it's majorly in the North. So I have to make research, you know, to be able to make my story believable. Exactly you have to behave like Agatha Christie. In the morning you pick up the newspapers or you listen exactly. to, or you, or you listen to, and you have to verify their claims. You have to verify the information. And anyway, if you are not very sure, we are very free in fiction. You see? Yeah. The, the, the liberty we have in writing fiction, nobody can stop you you are playing with the characters like a child playing with toys you see now you know it's in the north uh there is a book written by uh cyprian equency i don't know if you know him, that author yeah, yeah, I I about, yeah. uh, have you heard about him yeah cyprian equency yeah he wrote the burning grass about the fulanese you see but the difference between you and him he was born in the north and he observed these people he speaks also but now if you see yourself in the shoes of agatha christie uh, agatha christie never uh, do you know agatha christie have you heard about him, her agatha christie mm, yeah just um yes i'm just um uh, sherlock holmes do you know about sherlock? i don't know much about like okay that. let's look at african uh, writers um do you know about uh, Chimamanda, Ngozi Chimamanda? Yeah, yeah. yeah you, see, you see, there's a book she wrote about um, Biafra. She was, not yeah. born, she was not born during that period. It was a story uh, the grandma told her, and then uh, she did research. I watched the movie. If you go on my website, Nollywood France, you will watch the movie. Um, and again, she added she used the story of the grandma to write that book and a, a movie came out of it. So like you said, you are on the right road, there is research to make, and then you can choose whatever you want. Again, in your research, why I will advise you to write, to put it as a fiction is, some people might put fake news, some people um, might write things that are not uh, true. So in verifying their claims, if you want to write it as an, as an essay, they might mislead you. So when you go on fiction, it's uh, imagination plus reality, and then you can find yourself writing a wonderful book about the insecurity in Nigeria. So as we go ahead now here, um, what's expected from you? Create time to learn and practice the craft. Read and write regularly. There's one rule, one cardinal rule. The rule is reading is writing. Why should you read? Because um, the books of other authors will help you to write your own let me use one simple example if you imitate them if for example chimamanda's books you know africana you know americana and others so you might say oh i admire the way she writes i admire the color of the words the music i uh, i really uh, i admire her style completely now that can help you to start because there's something we call the writer's block that is you on your screen you don't know what to write so reading helps a lot it's the greatest secret in creative writing 
reading is writing you see so read like how a writer would if you have the time please read now like i said uh, there will be assignments and then that is true which i'm going to give to you guys after this uh, lesson but the most important thing as you are reading self-confidence you know a good number of writers when they are writing they say oh i don't know if it is good what i advise the authors have published i do tell them when you write for example you have written a page close it if you're not sure of what you're doing instead of throwing it away what you're going to do come back after two days you say oh my god did i write this is it coming out from me in fact why you should trust yourself is that you are a book you see um maxwell you told me that you are going to write about the insecurity in nigeria you are the book because it's affecting you every day affecting millions of people every day when they are traveling they are praying they don't know what's going to happen unlike before so trust yourself don't judge yourself too hard because why do you do that it's because of family members when family members hear that you are a writer everybody will be crying he said he will never make money in his life oh my god and if you are writing a story do not tell them you know i don't tell my wife that i'm writing she, uh, that i'm writing a story but now she she's used to it she comes to my office and uh, she does not disturb me she sees me writing but my children are very proud of their dad being a writer you see so just move with writers as we go along in this lesson i will um throw um um it's a group a club writers club on our, on our whatsapp group because when you are a doctor you must be in the association of doctors like um what you what you uh, um, uh, learned in the school uh, maxwell um had it been you were a chemical engineer you would be in, the, in that association so i'm in that club world writers club so that i can see what others are doing so that you will not feel alone in your corner because it's a very lonely job and as you are writing you want to tell your story to a non-writer they will laugh at you so this is why you should be confident you should be the general especially when you write fiction now like i told you um you have to keep yourself updated you've just said it uh, maxwell that you you do research research is part of our job and another thing again is to be confident and have the self-esteem as a writer you have to say my job is writing i'm a writer when you go to the mirror look at yourself and say i'm a writer you become a writer and when you become a writer you know you work every day you are like the baker you must bake your bread every day even if it is five lines in the morning here in france i wake up at seven o'clock at time 6 30 grab my coffee and then i start writing i write better in the morning some people might choose to write in the afternoon others might say my best time is in the night so um, i talked to one of my friends uh, who lives very close to me he told me that he cannot write in the morning but my own inspiration is in the morning um maxwell have you written something whatever or a journal you are keeping secretly and so on uh, do you have something like that mm, yes 
what time do you write? Uh, it varies though. At times I write in the, at times it's midnight, early hours of the morning, like you around see? 3 a.m. You see, you see. And that's where you have inspiration, you see. We are different. We are different. And again, when you are writing, it flows, isn't it? You continue to write. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I, hearing your voice, I know that um, you have that, uh, uh, you know, that audacity, that uh, confidence to write. And again, your job is helping you also, you know, when you, uh, when you organize events, it's a lot of hassle. I did it here in one of my books, uh, the French one, Du Chicago à Chartres, so, um, so voyage qui a changé ma vie, from Chicago to Chartres, this uh, voyage that changed my life. Well, uh, the book is about 10 years of festival I organized here with that money, and then um, so many people came. So you see, we are different. I, um, we are quite uh, different. We have inspiration at different periods of the day and night and so on. And that's why we are writers. So I move forward here. How does it feel to be a writer? To be honest with you, nobody uh, was born a writer. I was not born a writer. <laughs> I was not. You know, but my own environment is quite different. We have different stories to tell. And uh, part of that story I'm telling in my new book, which is um, Breakaway. <clears throat> you know, I started um, writing journals at the age of 10. So I worked very hard, I read a lot, and so on. So they worked hard to learn the craft. Now, naturally, we are all writers. I talked to one of my uh, friends here. Uh, he's a Frenchman in um, uh, very far from where I live. And uh, in our conversation, he, he told me his story. Uh, he has a lot of horses and uh, the horses go on competition and so on. In fact, we had a good time talking to each other. And that was my first time to meet him. Then I told him, listen, you can write your book and then I'll publish you. Then you know what he told me, uh, Maxwell? He said, I can speak, but I cannot write. When it comes to writing, I can do it. So that takes me to the technique of writing again. A good number of people record themselves now. We have the, you see, you have your telephone. If you record yes. yourself every day and transcribe it, those who are not pushed to writing and they don't know how to go about it. To be honest with you, 20 minutes gives you almost uh, a page or two if you can be patient to transcribe um, what you have said. And another reason again why people are not writing is because they put money first and then uh, writing second. To be honest with you, Writing books, yes, you can make money. But when you think about money first, you cannot write. You, you, you'll be blocked. Because writing is your passion. And if you can translate your passion into cash, I think that's the best thing I can wish to everyone. I'm, I'm getting some cash from my own books. Um, a man I published on Amazon, on Nollywood, he, uh, he is one of the veterans of Nollywood, um, Dr. Chika Ono, who lives in Port Harcourt. Um, his book is selling gradually on my platform, gradually on Amazon. You see, so when we started that project two years ago, I told him to forget about money. Money will come because we are like farmers. When you see a farmer going to uh, to uh, plant to sow maize, to plant maize, corn. The farmer, first of all, we sow the seed and then wait for six months for the harvest. We are like, everything you do in life is like that, especially when you are a writer. So 
um, like many of us, their first few drafts are often sloppy. Writing is for writing. I can imagine, uh, Maxwell, um, a good number of times when you are writing, you doubt yourself, you say, oh, this is not good. But the second draft might be good. And then you might be like me, like tomorrow morning when I go back to break away, I do say things again I want to add in this chapter or in the other chapter that makes it better. And at times I'll be satisfied. I said, okay, I, I'm okay with this chapter. So this is all about writing. Whenever you, you tell yourself, I am there and that's my destination, you are not a writer. You are, you're not a writer because we are never satisfied with our work. And this is why at one point, when you have written the first draft, the second draft and you continue changing, stop, stop, continue writing until you get to the end. Because eventually you are going to read, do the proofreading of your book once more yourself. And then do not give your manuscript to people who will talk you down. Do not give your manuscript to people who will say, oh, I'm changing the grammar mistakes here. I am changing that. I am doing that. And then they will talk you down to the extent that you don't like your work anymore. And then some of them will say, oh, I don't like your idea of this. But remember, you are the master. You want to tell a story to the world from your own angle, not from his own angle, not from the angle of Sifren Joseph. And this is why when I'm proofreading people, I'm very, very careful to make sure that I keep everything intact. I respect the author to make sure nothing is changed. You see, so that's very, very important. Disapp uh, despite the disappointments, I am here. They don't give up. Yeah, you'll be disappointed because you are lonely. Maybe your first draft, uh, your first manuscript, you meet some editors in Enugu, they will refuse it. They will tell you it's not good. I'm sorry, we are not uh, touching that uh, nonsense. That's the way they say it. <laughs> and um, I will bring hope to you guys because the book of, um, uh, if you know Animal Farm by uh, George Orwell. Do you know Animal Farm by George Orwell, Maxwell? I've heard about it. I've heard good. about Animal Farm. Yeah. Yes, the author uh, that was 60 years ago. He wrote Animal Farm. Uh, he has died a long time. And the second one he wrote was 1984. <laughs> the Godfather is watching you. His book was rejected because when he wrote the book, he was a dishwasher in Paris, and uh, all editors in Paris and even in England they refused the book. It was after some time. One editor picked up the book and the book became a bestseller. More than 60 million to 100 million copies sold and translated in so many languages. So you can see when people are talking you down, even the best editors who claim that they are the, um, the uh, um, people, uh, in fact, they are the lords in the literature might talk you down. Do not listen to them because it's only Maxwell that knows what Maxwell wants to show to the world. And this is why when I'm writing, I don't show it to people um, that will talk me down. And the way I do it, since I'm the editor and um, I'm a publisher, I have all the tools to do the proof writing. You know, we have now um, artificial intelligence that brings us all the comma, all the prepositions and so on, uh, what the eyes might not see. Uh, some years ago, 10 people will proofread your book, there are still grammar mistakes, but now it's almost impossible, almost impossible, you know, with the tools I have. So they are on a constant journey to learn and improvise. Yes, we improvise every time, especially in fiction, and any other genre of a book you want to write. We improvise. Yeah, we are never there. 
and then it's a long life learning a long life learning i'm still learning as you write you are learning you are discovering things you're discovering yourself and you are having more confidence in yourself to they keep a note to capture interesting thoughts ideas and dreams yes remember the characters you are looking for are all around you the dialogues you are looking for are all around you when i'm going to paris at times i open my telephone and put it on recording mode i i record what people are saying because when you throw such dialogue even in um, uh, scripts cinema you want i mean a film you want to shoot or you throw such dialogues in your book oh my god it looks so real that it seems that the characters want to jump out of your book in fact um this is how we get the dialogue they are in the streets they are in the market it could be um a, a woman selling tomatoes in any market shouting tomatoes tomatoes this is my best tomatoes you say what as a writer are you steal that from her she doesn't know what she's doing and the best thing if you have if you don't have your notebook record it because the dialogues and the ideas evaporate and you can never catch them again i don't know if that happens to you maxwell because you are the only one I can interact with this evening. Yes, yes, sir. it does. It does I have yeah. to record on WhatsApp or something. Or yeah. Comes a record. Uh, thank you very much. You see, we, in fact, when you are a writer, we are on the same pattern. We are, we are like twins everywhere because what I'm experiencing in France is the same thing you are experiencing in um, in uh, Enugu. The friend I told you, the Frenchman. He, he told me that as he's moving ar uh, around in his car, at times he stops to capture the emotions. He takes pictures, the emotions with his uh, iPhone. I said, what? And this is just how writers behave. You don't know the um, idea that can give you the best book. You see, so that's very important to have your notebook with you every time. They are flexible about changing the direction of their work. Yeah, if you feel that what you are writing is uh, clumsy and um, you don't feel it very well, why not change it? Yeah, well, my own advice is don't show it to anyone, only you only you and then when you are finished um like we are having this creative writing um uh, class you can show it to me uh, you can show it to cyril or denimbo that brought you guys down here we are open-minded and uh, we are not there to kill the job because some people will kill your work one second and then you go and sleep that's not what we want we want new writers to continue to write books because the stories are there especially in africa especially in nigeria the roads everywhere is drama to be honest with you guys if you come here here is too quiet very quiet people don't even laugh here you see you can see someone in any go laughing and laughing, or uh, in my place, they fall on the ground. And you can capture that. People are giving their books out to writers. And this is why people like uh, Wole Shoyinka, Chimamanda, and other writers, um, a good number of the time, um, uh, sorry, uh, most of the time, they love to stay in this type of place where people are acting without knowing that they are really acting. So you guys are lucky to be there to observe and uh, uh, to observe animated city. You see, where there is noise, people can play music 
from their cars. But here, you can do it. If you do it, the police will arrest you. You can make Maxwell to laugh. <laughs> Maxwell, did you hear what I'm saying? No, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> you see how lucky you are. But because a good number of you will say, I want to come to Europe, you want to come to Europe. Uh, yeah, it's good, but um, uh, like uh, we have light, we have this, but there are disadvantages too. You see, you must be very, very yeah. strong emotionally to live here. And then, but as a writer, you can um, heal yourself by writing what you see here. Um, as an African writer, I write about Africans, African communities, you see. And then, uh, be, because you cannot write what you do not know, and you cannot write um, on the point of view of other people's culture. Watch, the Germans write about the Germans, the French write about the French, except those that are in the university, they are studying anthropology, they are studying Egyptology, you know, uh, studying Egypt, studying Africans. But when you read their books, and read what an African wrote about the same subject, you know that they missed out so many things. So this is why to be a good writer, write about your culture. If you are an Igbo guy, write about the Igbo culture because you are free to bring out interesting things where nobody can challenge you. If you go on writing Yoruba culture, you might mess, mess yourself around. Look at Wale Shoyinka. He never writes about the evils. He continued to write about uh, Ududua and whatever and whatever. Read all his books. If you see their film um, um, makers like uh, uh, Tunde Kelani, I interviewed him in Paris uh, or others, it's about Yoruba mythology. So we have a lot of work as evils to write about our own culture. And uh, for me in the diaspora, uh, when I don't have subjects like that, I write about the African diaspora because they are black people. You see, uh, I, I, I am really bold writing about white people, except if it has something to do with me as I'm a teacher in my classroom and I've stayed here for a very long time to give my own experience as uh, a black man. So it becomes interesting for me to write, first of all, and I know my audience that will be interested in uh, my manuscript. So they observe the world around them deeply, including people, their characters and behavior. So this is what we have been saying. Now, now, guys, this is the homework, the assignment. This is where we stopped for today. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Can you see? Can you see everything on the board? Yeah, yeah. Write a story about the picture. You could yes. write about the whole scene, okay. or just one part that catches your attention. Okay. You could even choose to write about something that's just out of sight. This is a nice exercise. And this side, can you read this side? Okay. Question to think about. Where is this market? Is it a big market? Is the market in is the market in, in the big city or in the village? Who's the lady? What's her mood? What is she wearing? Ask more questions as you look at the picture. So this is like a fiction, you know, uh, for example, I asked uh, here, let me go back again, write about a story um uh, write a story about the picture you know you know we say a picture tells a thousand stories that you know uh, maxwell a picture yeah has a thousand yeah. stories from a picture um i have my grandson my, my grandchildren they have picture books they have picture books so there is uh, one of them that used to come here she's called adele you see her reading a book She's just four years old. What, what she's reading, she's just reading pictures. And uh, by the side, you know, children's book, the characters are big. I think the font is around 16 or 18, make it bigger, very small book. And she'll be reading the book. She's reading the picture. 
In my classroom, I use pictures to teach also. Uh, we call it flashcards. So pictures tell a lot of stories. <clears throat> From this picture, you guys can write a whole book. For example, where is this market? Now it could be you can take uh, this market to, uh, in yeah. fact, to, to be anyone. Uh, you want to say something, uh, Max? Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm listening to you. Okay, you wanted to say something. Okay, you can take this market to be any market in Enugu. Yeah, it could be anyone. The pictures here, um, I mean the the items here, um, you can describe it if you want, or you take another picture equivalent. I gave you guys a protagonist. Let's call her Ngozi. The journey, that's what we call the heroine's journey. She will start, see her laughing. She will start from the um, uh, normal world to um, the extraordinary world. And then within that journey, Ngozi will change. She will change because there is the beginning of her story. There will be the climax of the story where she will have a lot of problems. People will be very jealous. Look at her hair. They will be, they will even say, oh, Ngozi is prostituting her body and uh, people that do not like her, we call them the antagonist. There might be, because when uh, they, and again, like you talked about insecurity, she might be moving like that. Somebody will snatch away this uh, beautiful bag and she starts crying. But that's, I don't want to confuse you guys, but that's, many things can come out and it's in the market. And the person, for example, in the market that snatches it away, people will chase and so on, will throw it to the other one and so on and so forth. Now, to help you to write, you ask questions. And that is in the exercise. But when you are writing, you a good number of times you don't ask these questions. But in creative writing, I just wanted to direct your mind to area to questions that can help you people to do this assignment is the market in in oh i made a mistake here is the market in a sorry sorry please is the market in a big city or in the village cancel the day is just a mistake now yeah. it's it's now for you to think about where you are going to set the setting of your story it could be in the village, it could be anywhere. Now, who is the lady? Now, there's one point, um, you know, the way what I tell my students at times is, um, is uh, the concept of uh, writing is normally used in journalism most of the time. Now, when you pick up a newspaper in Nigeria, good ones, you know, daily times, they ask five questions on the sixth one. I think you know that. I think you know that, um, Maxwell. The first question is, what are we talking about? I think you know it. Yeah. The five W's. Yeah. Now, the five W's can be used in your story to give you the first draft. Then when you come back to the second draft, you start developing. You start developing. So who is the lady you can call? The lady any, any name? What's her mood? We can see that she's happy. She's happy. And uh, we can see also, but what can you see, um, Maxwell? Is she the owner? Can we say she's the owner or she's not the owner? What's your imagination telling you? She's a customer. Yes, that's what we see. That's what we see. Because the owner, I can see. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, the owner we can see I, is is the hand, okay? Yeah, she I think wearing? She's yeah, yeah, you can see. Ask more questions as you look at the picture. So that's it for today's lesson, guys. And do you have any questions so that we can close up? Questions from you? Uh, that's really for now. Sorry? For now, no question. I no said for question. now, no question. Okay. Yeah. So what you have seen here, 
what we have seen here, and in this assignment, I will throw it on um, on our WhatsApp group. So okay. the first um, assignment, you can ignore it. I mean, the five lines, you know, that's what you do every time and so on. Yeah. But this is the major assignment and um, we can develop, you guys can develop this story if you want. You that is interested in um, insecurity in Nigeria, this lady might help might be your heroine in that story. I'm, I, I'm only suggesting, I, I'm not trying to say that you should uh, use it, yeah, yeah. but if you want to use her, uh, she might, you might take her to very, to different places. And then she might be the one that will, uh, you know, at the end of the book, the resolution, and then you get your book. Okay. Yeah. So we will continue next time. If there's no question, no question from Kelvin. Uh, maybe what we are going to do the next time is um, get in contact with Kelvin, please. And can you guys tr uh, tr try to see uh, if there's a way to fix the technical problem? Or I will leave a note on our WhatsApp and uh, try to connect with him if he wants outside the class to help him solve this problem it's very very important yep. okay so that's it that's it and then um, to conclude i live in in a city called chartres it's uh, 100 kilometers away from paris that's it wow. and you see how technology is powerful i'm talking to you yeah. guys all the way from france and you, you are in enugu okay so um uh Cyril will fix another class which we said Mondays. I don't know if it is good for you on Monday. Is it good? Mm, I think what? we'll just discuss. Yeah. Sorry? I think we'll discuss and get back. Okay. Now do your best. Uh, are you interested? Um did you uh, okay uh, it's me to ask the question what's your takeaway from this class if you you, you can speak for kelvin okay. because i can hear i mean uh, maxwell what's okay. the takeaway okay. from this I think class the, i think the class is interesting for me as a content creator actually it's very interesting to know it's very important for you to know how to write at least to write content even if it's not really story story yeah, so, and with the, well, what you've thought so far, you've just uh, told us not to give up, no matter how sloppy the writing is, you just keep on writing, you will still get it at the time. And you also need to read more, read more books, practice and practice to get your lesson right. Yeah. So that's yeah. just thing. Yeah. You, you summarize the class, practice, practice makes perfect in everything we do in the world. And then... Um, uh, yeah, um, Magnus Media Studio is back. <laughs> <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> so serious. So I know, I Magnus. know, I know. Yeah, I'll be following. So yeah. So well. what? What's your? I I asked. I'm asking the last question before we go away. Uh, what's your takeaway, Cyril, as uh, a teacher and um, a director of a school from this uh, class? This is the first one. What's your takeaway? Okay, very well. Um, the, the, the point is that, you know, do remember that I left and then came back. I, I was trying to bring, you know, like all of that. Okay. You remember? Yes. yes. So um, uh, but, uh, the little I could get because I didn't pay 100% attention because I was trying to ensure that all of them, you know, uh, one person gave me a reason and all of that. that is on the road, uh, road going to their house so, and all of that. So, um the only thing I understand is that there's every need for, just in summary, which is uh, as a beginner, um, for one to read, learn to learn how to read always, you know, as much as possible, not just newspapers, but then different um, uh, articles from different uh, books. I, I could remember somebody saying that when you read um, often, voluptuously, you're actually having 
uh, an intercourse with the writer. Let me use they use the person use the word intercourse. Yeah, so it's more or less like having an in, in, uh, um, intimate understanding from the person's perspective. And then what it does is that it broadens, it opens your inner tentacles to to actually um, be creative and write more. And you know, once you have the passion and develop it alongside. Then you can write and write and you know become greater and great you know and, as you go. So that's it. <laughs> you you summarize it. To be honest <laughs> with you, even even if you were not here with us, yes. yeah. <laughs> and uh, what is very nice again before we close up is uh, creating this community, writing community, mm. and um, because we help ourselves. Like you see me um i don't know it all uh why i don't know it all is i don't have the materials you know um the materials i'm looking for it's um african stuff to be able to write you know and then i was telling Kel, um max uh, maxwell that you guys are very lucky to be in an environment where you are like fishing water you can write if i'm in that environment i will write many books because when i open my window i will see the books i'll see the people but the difference is what's happening this evening i know the hustle you guys are going through we have our own hustles here too i see uh, the hustle here you see you you are lonely and uh, you are um not meeting the right Africans you want to see, you know. Uh, some of them are in a wonderful hustle. And this is after writing Breakaway, that's going to be my next book. The hustle here uh, of our brothers and sisters uh, is killing them, is killing them. <laughs> While at the same time, the people at home write them letters every time to bring money back home. They don't know what they're doing. You see? And again, what is strange about their attitude is that they write what I call wrong letters. They boast about their um, situation here, while in the recent of it, they are working their ass off. You see, it's a very nice book for me because there is a lot of imperfection in, in what they are doing. And I love that. And for a writer to bring out a nice manuscript, there should be imperfection. It's not perfect. I'm not laughing at them, but that's how their world is. But you guys, the difference again over there is, you see, I can see problem of light, I can see problem of insecurity and so on. But do you know it's very healing if you're a writer to write all those things down for the future generation and for yourself and for your children and for so many things. And again, for money, if it gives you money. You see, there is enjoyment in writing. So that's the way I can say it. Thank you very much, Cyril Odenimbo. Thank you very much, um, Maxwell, for coming. Thank you very much, Kevin. I think this is the end of our class. And uh, please, uh, the assignment, send it to Cyril so that uh, before the next class. Cyril, you are going to organize the next class since they are interested for us that's to continue. Great. And then okay. you let me know you, and see with there. And let's let's have more people come in. You see, let's have more people sure. come in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Yeah. Thank just a really minute. Just a minute. <laughs> just a minute, so that we can see ourselves more. Uh, I will stop sharing. Just a minute. Uh, uh, he said, uh, da, da, da. sharing, sharing, sharing. Uh, oh, just a minute. Stop sharing. So now we have stopped sharing and um, we can see ourselves better. So every one of you will come back next time and then we'll have more people. It's going to be a journey. We, we will have together and then um, you will not regret it. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.
Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. Bye. Bye.